Welcome back to the channel, hope everybody's doing well. In today's video we are continuing with UT505B and this time looking at the insulation test function that I had a bit of an issue with when I tested this little three phase motor. This read twice, almost twice, the result I got from the MTR105 there. So we're going to take a look, see if there's anything obvious that's causing that issue. I'm going to test it with a number of insulation testers so I can get a kind of an average value of doing this. So we're going to do one minute tests, uh, which we will be a DAR on uh, this unit here for one minute 30 seconds. And we'll hit the go button on this and we shall see how we get along. So we're coming up to the end of the test on the UT505B. Uh, we'll have to memorise the gigaohm resort because we'll lose it. So 1.77 gigaohms was the insulation value and a DAR of 1.17. So now obviously it would be bad to keep doing insulation test after insulation test on this motor because you can effectively charge it up. So I'm just going to short the motor out for a little while and then we'll do the test on the MTR105 uh, but we can set him up in the meantime to 500 volts okay so we've let the motor discharge for a little while um, we are set up with our MTR105 we're on DAR again 500 volts and we'll go for it and see what reading we get from this one we're up for 1.77 gig ohms on the UT505B Coming to the end of the test with the MTR1055 and we are 700-ish mega ohms gets 1.77 giga ohms uh, so 720 uh, so our dial is 1.18 which is put the light back on so our dial is 1.18 which is equivalent to the UT505B but you can see a significant difference between the readings there for the mega ohms. So okay, we'll stick our short back on and we'll reconvene with another insulation tester in a little while. Coming up to the end with the key site, you can see we're 855 mega ohms there. So a little bit higher than the MTR105, but still substantially less than the UT505B, uh, 1.08 for the actual DAR ratio, which is similar to both the instruments there. Well, we can go to range, can't we come? And there's our one minute reading there, and there's our 30 second ratio again. Okay, that's that one. We'll reapply our short and give it another uh, couple of minutes, and then we'll test with another instrument. Okay, that's the Sonor MIC30 there. We've got 963 mega ohms, so that's a little bit higher than the other two instruments, but still quite a bit less than the UT505B. Uh, we'll just go along the buttons here, and our ratio for our dial is 1.062, uh, which again is fairly comparable to the other units there. Okay, we are back again, but this time with the uh, Chavanagh New CA6526. We're set up for DAR, and we'll give this a go and see what happens. Okay, so that's the end of that one. That one bounced around quite a lot, didn't it, really? Um, yeah, it's probably one of the lower values when it comes down to it. Um, yeah. So it's 30 seconds, 463, uh, 5, 4, 9, I'm still on T1, T2 was 484 mega ohms. Um, so it's one of the lower values, yeah. And a dial of 1.05 again is pretty much 
comparable. Okay, so we are going to give this unit from Xtech a go. Uh, this is actually from Sam. Uh, it's a rebadge unit. It's rebadged by a load of others. Dialog, RS Pro, and obviously Xtech themselves here. It doesn't have DAR and Pi functionality, but I'm going to time it using the MTR105 here. And hopefully we can get a reading in that manner. So I just need to start them off both at the same time. And see what happens. Downside to this is that the X-Tech is a very noisy instrument. That's a 30 second value. That's our one minute value, um, but we'll have to do a calculation on that one, won't we? So uh, we'll uh, leave that till the results table to find out what the dial ratio is up on that, but 900 odd mega ohms, I believe it was, so that seems fairly comparable to the other units at this moment in time. Okay, we're with another unit that I'm going to have to manually time uh, and then do a calculation. This is the Metrol MI3121H. Uh, we are set up for 500 volts. Let's remove the link, otherwise we're going to have problems. And we can set this one off as well. So there's our 30 second value there, 690. There's our zero, zero value there. Uh, 60 seconds, 856 mega ohms, so there you go, there's that one there. So we've saved the worst one till last. Uh, this is the Metra Hit Coil. Uh, this has no DARPI functionality, can't even lock it on for a timer. So I'm going to have to hold this one in manually. And again, I'll time from the MTR105 here. And let's uh, go for this one. Uh, So it's 948 at 30 seconds. And there's 1028 there was our final value at 60 seconds. So that's that one done. So here's our results table. Um, you can see at the top line there, that's the insulation value in mega ohms at the one minute mark for each of the instruments. And you can see there uh, the UT505B, that's got the highest reading. And the showing our new CA6526, that's got the lowest reading. Um, quite a spread. If we look at the line below that, that's the deviation from the average of all the readings there, with the UT505B being 85% above the average, and the CA6526 being 50% below it. So that's quite a significant difference there. Uh, all these tests were carried out over about an hour on the same motor, so the ambient conditions shouldn't have drifted significantly, and I wouldn't have thought they would be affecting the reading. So it looks like it is some sort of difference between the operation of each of the instruments that's given this different value. The next two lines down, that's the dielectric absorption ratio. And you can see that's pretty consistent across all the instruments. Uh, we've got a spread there of 10.8% uh, for the metro. And then the lowest one is minus 6% again for the Chevenar new unit. Interestingly enough, I did also test each of the instruments out on a 1 gig ohm test resistor. And you can see the results for that test in those bottom two lines and then the deviation from its average and there we have much much tighter results um, you can see where are we our Chevron new is 0.55% above and the lowest one is minus 0.85% for the Metra hit so you see a much tighter set of results for a resistance value than you do for an actual motor winding a small section of table just below that, that's just the general statistics there for each of the results. Plus or minus three standard deviations from there, that's the standard statistical test uh, to ensure that you haven't got any outliers within your data. And all the measurements that I made do fall 
within those plus or minus three deviations so there doesn't appear to be any statistical errors in there of any significance um, okay so that's it for our test results table we'll see if we can set up and do some tests on the UT505B to try and determine what's going on okay so we have set up with our UT505B onto our motor we're currently in test and we have an oscilloscope running on to the side there but this is not very good for screen recording so I'll put pictures up of this that I've captured which is this first one that I'll put up that shows the initial spike that you get um, which is quite hefty and then you see it uh, slowly rise up onto the actual full test voltage but you do see that in an awful lot of insulation testers so it's nothing too much to worry about um, and then I'll put this one up here the next one is actually the FFT capture of just this test that you see ongoing now um, and there's nothing really untoward with regard to that that you would worry about too much the problem that I'm having is that to get these readings on the oscilloscope I'm using a high voltage probe uh, and unfortunately the resistance of that high voltage probe is affecting the reading um, let's just go back onto the screen here for the UT505B you will see that we're running on 0.69ish giga ohms uh, if I disconnect this probe you can see we immediately jump up to the 2.2 gigs, 2.3 gigs. Um, so I'm not really going to be able to do too much investigation with this. Uh, what I will just show you, uh, if we knock this off, um, I do have here a little capacitor. Uh, this is a 0.1 microfarad capacitor that I can put in parallel. So we're now just running across the output of the UT505B with this uh, little 0.1 microfarad capacitor. We'll see now when I turn this on now, uh, obviously the reading has changed, but we start to see an awful lot more oscillation in the output of this. You can see it bouncing around, whereas it was relatively steady, much higher than it was for other meters, but at least it was fairly steady. Now it's just bouncing around all over the place. So there does appear to be some sort of filtration issue with the output of this insulation tester. Um, all the measurements that you do will really have to be done with the, from within inside the instrument in between the actual output of the insulation testing function and its measurement circuit. If you get in there then you don't affect the way the meter is reading uh, but obviously I'm going to struggle to do that. Um, so what we'll just do is stop this and I'll just show you in comparison and we'll stick the Mega NTR105 into circuit so what we've done is set up with the actual capacitor here in parallel and I'll repeat this test. So as you can see as the mega starts to settle down you can see it takes a bit longer to get up to its uh, resistance reading but that's because of the effect of the capacitance. So this instrument isn't affected in the same manner as the UT505B with an external capacitor on there. So there's obviously more filtration on the output of this unit that prevents the oscillation. And so there's our end results there. 708 mega ohms at one minute and a DAR of 1.27. Uh, so fairly comparable to previous values really. Uh, what I will just do is do the same with the Chevenar new unit because that produced uh, an interesting result. Um, in fact, it was much, much lower than any of the other two instruments. So we'll set up again and we'll give this a go and we'll see if this oscillates the same because this did produce much lower readings than any of the other instruments, uh, which is kind of interesting. Now we're producing much higher readings than the MTR105, but it is actually still a steady output. Um, it's not bouncing around in the same manner as the UT505B. So again, you see with these more expensive units, probably much better filtration on the actual output voltage that isn't affected by impedance of the device that's under test. So the mega ohm resistance was much higher, but 1.15 compared to 1.27 for the actual DAR value. So I guess reasonably comparable but it is surprising to me the actual difference you're getting between the installation test values for this uh, one particular motor. So that brings this video to a close, a little bit of a disappointing one.
that we couldn't do much progress with the testing. All we've proven really is that there appears to be a bit of an issue with the output on this UNI-T with regards to its stability, uh, certainly in comparison to these more professional units, although quite what's happening with the uh, Chavanagh new unit there, I'm not sure about. That's going to need some more testing as well. Um, that's probably a bigger disappointment because I use that instrument quite a lot as it can attach via Bluetooth to a computer and output the results as you're testing. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful. And I'll see you again in the next video.